I think we're in a time of great change in the space field. Um, President Obama coming in and actually mandating some of the things we've been saying for 20, 30 years uh, is very exciting. Um, we did have some resistance in Congress from what I will call the traditional space constituency. Uh, that's my kind words for it. Uh, they're pork barrelers is maybe another way to put it. People are used to bringing home the bacon for places where uh, NASA has been spending a lot of money with aerospace contractors. Um, new space threatens that. And, um, you know, by the way, the definition of a new space company is a company that is created by, funded by, built by, operated by, or has the goal of opening space to human settlement and uses the tools of free enterprise to make that happen. Boom. You can say company or project. I used to say just companies because, for example, normally a Boeing or a Lockheed Martin would not be seen as a new space company. They're going to take their check, they're going to spend money looking busy, and they don't really care if they're going to open space. That's changing a little bit. And uh, I've said that recently to some Boeing people, you're kind of screwing me up here because you're actually getting a little bit visionary. So we've got Boeing working with Bigelow, so I have to say new space projects. And so Boeing Bigelow are working on capsules to fly to the Boeing, uh, to the Bigelow Space Station, and maybe to the International Space Station. So um, that's a new space project. It has as its goal. I mean, if you ask Bob Bibolo, Bigelow, excuse me, if you ask Bob Bigelow what his motivation is, it's human settlement of space. If you ask Elon Musk, what's your motivation? Human settlement of space. Uh, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, human settlement of space. John Carmack, human settlement of space, on and on. This is a revolution. And what's exciting to me, and this is one of those things you won't see until you look back, um, is this is at the level of Copernicus. This is major stuff. Nobody even knows it's happening. You know, it'll be the day after. It's like, I, I live in the area of Hollywood, which, are, by the way, argues against intelligent life on the planet, but... Um, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> the, the aliens are here. Uh, but... Um, there's a saying there amongst some of the television producer people, and you'll appreciate this, I guess. Um, you know, everybody wants to be the first to discover a proven idea. You know, and, and that's the basis by which they decide what goes on TV. You know, so... Um, you know, we're, we're, at, we're at a real time of change. And um, what I'm excited about um, is I'm seeing a lot of young people getting involved. Um, and they're catching the fire. They're getting the spark. You know, there was a time in the 70s when Jerry O'Neill, the godfather of soul of our whole movement, don't let anybody tell you different. It didn't start with me. It didn't start with Bob Zubrin. It didn't start with Peter Diamandis. It didn't start with any of those people. It started with Jerry O'Neill. We used to call ourselves Jerry's kids. And Jerry gave us permission to dream, to believe in ourselves. And we all got together in the uh, early, uh, in the mid 80s, excuse me. Let me start again. Um, Jerry O'Neill was our godfather of soul of this movement. All of us got together uh, at his conferences in Princeton, Space Studies Institute conferences. And we pledged our lives, literally. Uh, we made a pledge to each other. We called it the benevolent conspiracy. And uh, Peter Diamandis was there, I was there, uh, a whole bunch of people, David Gump, Jim Muncy, who works the political side. We were all there, Gary Hudson, all of us, and we said we're going to pledge our lives to opening the frontier until the human expansion into space is irreversible. And we toasted. And we're still doing it all these years and later. And um, what has happened is that that revolution now has begun to manifest itself in, in real ways. The rich guys showing up is almost like the cavalry showing up because we've been beaten so many times. We have had our posteriors kicked repeatedly. Uh, but um, right now is a time of change. Um, there's three legs that this new platform, this new revolution can stand on. And I know since the movie came out, um, the term perfect storm has been overused. Everything's a perfect storm. But in this case, uh, to make the point, I'll use it again. There's a perfect storm in that what we have are uh, people who have been forming the philosophical discussion, just myself and others, for many years, who have been out there trying to prove it, trying to make the case for it, trying to structure the culture and the conversation. 
Then we have uh, a new group of people who, as we say in Texas, came up with us, who are inside of NASA. And the new deputy administrator, several of the other powerful people in NASA, and some of the aerospace companies, literally came up from the Jerry O'Neill roots, or the L5 Society, which spun off of Dr. O'Neill's concepts. These people believe in human settlement as the end goal for the human space program. Um, and then the third element is the existence proof outside the door of these companies that are building and flying rockets in space hotels. So, in, the, in terms of uh, maybe historical theory, when you look at what it takes to make a revolution, we finally got all the elements. We can show how it's gonna be done. We can talk about what it means on a philosophical level. We have people bankrolling it. We have the beginnings of the propaganda machine, getting the word out to people such as yourself. Um, and we have people on the inside of the existing government who are revolutionaries, who can open the gates to the castle and let us in. And uh, that's where we are right now. We haven't won the game. I've had some people say, oh, we've won. No. We just got our asses kicked this year in Congress by the traditionalists and the pork barrel types. What we have won is simply the right to enter the field and begin the game or the battle. That's it. We haven't won anything yet. We've just been allowed on the field. Now the battle begins for the future. Now the revolution can really begin to happen. And that's why we're here. And that's why I'm here.